Hi, it's Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, we're going to take a look at how to do a BIOS flashback on this motherboard here. So, this is the Asus Prime X 870 P Wi Fi. This is a pretty nice board, and we've done a review video on it. So, if you want to check that, you're more than welcome to do so. But chances are you probably come here because you just want to know how to flash the BIOS. It's actually pretty straightforward, a pretty simple thing to do. Just make sure that you do things in the right order, format the right drives, and all that kind of stuff. But anyway. We'll get to that as we go through. So what are you going to need to perform the BIOS flashback? Well, you're going to need a couple of things. Uh, firstly, something to put your motherboard on, so ideally onto the box itself. Now, a lot of people say to me, Mike, can I do this on a fully built system? Yes, of course you can. That's absolutely fine. But for me, for demonstration purposes, and also for basically simplicity, I do it on a bare board. The choice is entirely up to you, whichever way you want to do it. I think personally doing it on a bare board is more kind of proactive because you can just do the boss flash and if there's anything that doesn't work you can rule out obviously everything else which would be connected so if you're doing it on a fully built system and for some reason it won't flash any of the parts on the computer could be problematic so that is the reason why i do it this way but you do it however you see fit so obviously you need the motherboard itself you'll need a usb flash drive now the usb flash drives have to be formatted in the fat 32 file system now for windows users you can only do a 32 gigabyte drive. Potentially, if you're doing this on another computer, Linux or Mac, you might be able to do it with a larger drive. I always recommend a 32 gigabyte drive or smaller. You can do as small as maybe a 64 megabyte drive if you want to, because the actual flash itself is about 32 megabytes. So by the time it's kind of extracted and formatted and all that kind of stuff, then that should be absolutely fine. You'll also need your PC power supply. You also need two connectors on the power supply one of which is the main 24 pin power connector and the extra one is the CPU power connector. Now you don't always necessarily have to have that connected but hey, most of the time it does need doing so I always put it on anyway. So that goes into the top of the motherboard which you're probably seeing for some B-roll we shot a little bit earlier and also the 24 pin main power connector is the big one over on the side. Now other things you might want to do to get yourself kind of accustomed to the motherboard itself is to look on the back panel to see where the BOSS flashback button is. On this particular board, it's located just here. And make sure that your button has a nice defined click to it. If it hasn't, it could be damaged and therefore you won't be able to flash your BIOS. Also, look for the BOSS flashback port on this one. It's nice and easily highlighted and it's the top one on this row of USBs here, right next to the Wi-Fi 7 antenna. It does say BOSS on it, so you shouldn't be able to go too far wrong. So that's pretty much it from the hardware point of view. So let's go over to the computer now and I'll show you how to download the BIOS, how to format the drive and all that kind of good stuff and rename the files. You'll find out more as we go through it. So let's head over to the computer. Okay, so here we are on our desktop PC. So I'm gonna plug in the flash drive and you'll see at the moment this one is empty anyway. Now my suggestion would be to format the drive anyway, just to make sure. So if you right click on the drive, choose format and make sure that all this looks good. So FAT32 is what we want to see. And also you can set the default allocation size, leave the volume label and leave the quick format option there. When you're ready, click on start. Obviously this is going to erase the drive. So make sure you've got no files on there that you actually need to keep. When you're happy, click on OK. And it should very quickly format the drive, giving us a blank drive. So that is that part of it done. So we can now go ahead and close that. Next part is to actually get the BIOS itself. So in order to get the BIOS, go over to the ASUS website for the Prime X870-P Wi-Fi. Make sure you get the version right, because otherwise you'll be getting the wrong BIOS. You can do this however you want to, whichever browser you choose. I'll leave some links for this actually in the video description to make life a little bit easier for you. So what I'll do is go over to the support tab and then go to drivers and tools. And in this section, you've got drivers and tools and BIOS and firmware. So we'll go into the BIOS section. Now for those of you that are wondering, do I actually need to do a BIOS update? Now, if you look on the side of your motherboard box, it will actually say when this board was produced. Now this particular board was produced sometime in March of 2025. So it's actually a relatively new one, but there are newer BIOSes. So we can go ahead and get a newer version. If we click on see all downloads, you can get a rough idea of which version is actually on your board. So our board was manufactured in March. So it's a pretty likely case that we've got version 10.22 on our board. Potentially it might be this one, 10.06. Again, depending on what was available at the time of the board actually being rolled off the production line. 
So there's been a couple of BOSS updates since that, and I want to go for the very latest one because of security and stability, as it says there, improved system stability and enhanced reliability. So that's always a good thing. And the newest one is actually a beta version. Whether you want to do a beta, that's entirely up to you. If not, you can do the one slightly later. So we've got version there, 1028. Um, yeah, entirely up to you, whichever you do. Beta versions generally are fine. So I'm going to go ahead and do that one. We'll click on download and it'll ask you where you want to save it to. I'm just gonna go and save it to the default location, which is the downloads. Alternatively, if you want to, you can actually choose your desktop. That might actually be easier. So that, actually, let's do that. We'll save it to the Windows desktop. So click on save. That should happen very quickly because it's only a very small file. So we're done there. So we can close this window down. If we go to our Windows desktop, we have our zipped file. So we're gonna need to extract that. So right click and choose extract all and just go along with the defaults there and click extract. And we've got some options here. So this is the bare or raw BIOS in the cap file. So if you're doing a BIOS update and you're not using the BIOS flashback button, i.e. your system is working and you just want to update it from within the BIOS itself using the ASUS system with a working PC, you can just use this file on its own. If you are doing it via the USB flashback method, you have to do the BIOS renamer. So double click on the EXE there and it'll say, press any key to continue. And there we go. So it's now changed the file name to something that the motherboard can actually recognize. This is really important. If you don't do this, it won't be able to see it. So at this point now, we can take this BIOS file, just this one, we don't need the EXE, and right click on it, and we'll choose cut. And then we'll go to our USB drive, right click and choose paste. And there we go, that is our cap file. You should see it's around about 32 megabytes in size, so 32,772 kilobytes. That is absolutely fine, and that is the only file we want on the USB drive. So now we can close this down, we can take out our USB drive, and we can head over to our little test bench and get this thing flashed. Okay, so now we're at our little test bench setup here, so we might as well put our USB drive in. So again, we know which port it is. It's one that is marked BIOS. So we can plug that into there. And we've got our power supply, we've got the power plugged into it, but it's currently switched off. So we'll take our 24 pin main power connector, that goes into the connector on the far side of the board. Hopefully you're seeing some overhead shots of this so you can see it nice and clearly. And also we've got our eight pin EPS connector, which goes into the top of the motherboard. It doesn't matter which one of those two ports you plug it into, both of them will do exactly the same job, so that's not a problem at all. So just make sure that is lined up and plug that into the top there. They are color coded in gray. And that is kind of pretty much it. So what we want to do now is turn on the power supply. And next thing to do, we want to press the BIOS flashback button, press it in for about two or three seconds, just hold it until the BIOS LED starts flashing. So let's do that now. So one, two, three. And hopefully there you can just about see, the lighting is not particularly great here, but you can just about see that the BIOS LED is flashing. If you look through the side of the motherboard as well, you can see it's actually reflecting on the back. So what we're waiting for now is for the USB to completely go out. That means the BIOS flash is done. So let's give you a close up so you can see what that looks like. So again, as we've said previously, just let it go on, do its own thing. This should take somewhere in the region of about four or five minutes. So if you want to set something of the timer or look at your watch to see what the time is and just keep an eye on the LED flashing. If the LED flashes just for a couple of flashes then turns off, that means either the USB drive you're using is not formatted correctly or the file you've downloaded is in an incorrect format. Again, at some point you should see that the BIOS LED will change speeds. So normally it will flash a little bit slower to begin with. Then when it's actually getting into the flashing process, it will go a little bit quicker and then generally we'll see it slow down towards the end. Then the system will probably click off and you may hear your power supply click off and then it possibly will try and reboot itself as if it's basically powered on for the first time. But essentially what we're looking for is for this BIOS LED to stop flashing and completely turn itself off. Once it's done that, we'll be able to turn off the power and disconnect everything should we need to. Or alternatively, if you have a fully built system, you may find you can now turn on your PC and it will actually boot up. Again, I can't stress this enough, just leave the computer alone, let it do its own thing, be patient, 
again, if it goes on for more than about five to 10 minutes and it doesn't change speeds in terms of the LED flashing, something has gone wrong and then you can turn off the system and start over. So hopefully I think I've just caught that. So the BOSS LED has now stopped. Looks like the computer has turned itself off. So that is it. The BOSS has been flashed. So at this point now, you can remove your USB drive because the LED has gone out and also you can turn off your power supply. So again, as we said previously, it's all done now. So USB drive has been removed. You can turn off your power supply if you've got it in a bare setup like this. And now if you want to, you can put on your RAM, put on your CPU and a cooler, maybe do a test boot to make sure that everything works. Again, if you've got your system fully built, then you should find now just turn the PC on and it should all work as normal. Unfortunately, due to some of the cost cutbacks on this particular board, there isn't a diagnostic LED. So potentially if you've done this and your system is still not booting, you might wanna look at getting a small BIOS bleep speaker, which can be plugged into the motherboard. That way then you can listen out for any kind of telltale bleeps, which may give away the problem with your system. Unfortunately, other than that, yeah, you're pretty much on your own. But if that does happen to you, feel free to reach out to us on our Discord and someone will try and help you, maybe even myself, depending what time of day it is. And again, as always, if you've got any comments or questions, feel free to let us know in that comment section below. We'll try and answer every single one of them. I think that's going to pretty much wrap this video up. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. If you have, smash the like button. If you want to see more content of this on a daily basis, maybe consider hitting subscribe and also the chime notification. And potentially if you want to, you can head over to our new channel, which is Mike's Unboxing, and you can subscribe to that as well. And you may find some other content of interest. So I think that's going to wrap this one up. I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.